What's up guys, PJ here from 3D Printing Canada. Today in front of me I have our Ender Max. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take this dual Z kit from Creality and we're gonna show you how to install it. Stay tuned. All right, so let's get this box opened up and see what comes inside. We'll get rid of the foam there. Simple instruction manual. Now, seems very simple to install. I haven't installed one yet. So we'll start off, you give you a mounting bracket that's new along with the lead nut and wire and extension cable. Then we get our upper bracket and hardware, as well as our 42, 34 stepper motor, a collet, and a lead screw. All right, guys, so we're gonna start assembling our dual Z. We're gonna start here by taking off the power supply. That's gonna be our first step. So. Go ahead and I'll grab my tools here. I believe to take the power supply off, we're looking at a 2.5 driver here. So it's just one screw here. And then one more here at the bottom. Now hold the power supply guys because we don't want to drop it and rip a wire off or potentially damage it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that power supply. And what I'll do is I'll actually unplug it here. It's just a little XT60 connector underneath the printer. You go ahead and unplug that and get your power supply out of the way. So we don't be needing that right now. Next step is, is I'm actually gonna take the top of this off and I'm gonna remove the whole gantry to make it a lot easier to install the new plate and wheels, etc. We'll go ahead and take the top off. So we'll go ahead and take the top off, set that aside. Now carefully, we'll remove this because the lead screw with the anti-backlash nut that comes stock on these is gonna wanna pop right off. So we'll hold that to make sure it doesn't spring off on us. All right, we'll be reinstalling that after. Now I'll just take the lead screw and help get, let it help me thread that off a little bit there. Now I'm gonna actually move the printer out of the way so we can install our new lead screw set up. All right, so the next step here is we're gonna actually remove our old X carriage brace it's a 2.5 driver. We'll just go ahead and unthread that. And unthread this one. We're gonna take these wheels off. So as I take one off, I'll just install it into the uh, new bracket. Well, one goes off, one goes back on. That way you can keep the order of the wheels. Always being careful not to cross thread things. So now our wheel with the eccentric nut, we wanna make sure, as you can see here, that the nut is facing inward. So it's opposite of the other two wheels. That's the one with the eccentric nut. So after you've dumped out all the hardware that they provide in the kit, you're gonna to wanna to take the extra long bolts they give you because you're gonna need the three spacers they actually add in to the kit as well to complete the assembly. All right, now that we have all the parts laid out here on the table in front of us, you have your main plate, which is gonna stay the same. Now we wanna make sure we assemble this the right way. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do I'm gonna take this eccentric nut 
and this longer bolt they provide in the kit. You're not gonna be using the standard bolts anymore. That bolt will go through, your eccentric nut will drop on your wheel and then a spacer, okay? So that's step number one. Now, I'm just gonna leave that. And what we can do is we can put a spacer here, a spacer here, a wheel, a wheel, spacer, and where's the other one? There we go, and another spacer. Then our plate's gonna go over top, like so. And we'll take our longer hardware. And hopefully everything lines up there. Doesn't give me too much of a hard time. Uh, of course it's going to. There we go. And once you get them to fall through, there we go. I'm just gonna carefully lift up, holding the bottom screw here so nothing falls apart. And then I'll go ahead and I will attach the locking nuts. That way they don't fall out. And then we'll crank everything down. Okay, now keep in mind, the two wheels that are above each other here, you need the flat part of the screw hanging out or the bolt hanging out and then the nut on the opposite side. Now that's the side with your eccentric nut. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and show you that. Now I'm gonna just hold these together. Get your eight mil wrench. Just pop it on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up uh, with the three mil hex wrench. All right, there's our eccentric nut, which we can also adjust if there's any play in these wheels are too loose once we put it on the gantry. Flip it around, same thing. Now that we have our bracket assembled, we're gonna go ahead and install it onto our X gantry. Now the reason we left the bolt side as opposed to the nut is for the countersink right here. So it will just sit in there and rest properly. I'll start. You're gonna use the same hardware as before. Ones with the lock washers. I'm gonna take our M 2.5 and I will start with this one. We'll take our X gantry here. Run the driver through. And then we'll install it here. There you go. Make sure you don't cross thread into your aluminum extrusion or over tighten. Now we want it tight, but not too tight. And you also want this bar level with your X gantry. That's extremely important as well. Go and install the last one. All right, now we have our X gantry bracket for our dual Z installed. All right, so the next step, I'm going to get the X gantry and replace it onto our uprights. Now we wanna be careful doing this, not to bang up our Z rod at all. So line that up. And just line up your Z-Rod, get it started. And now we have the X gantry back on. I'm gonna take the printer now, I'm gonna flip it around, we're gonna install the motor. What we have to do here is we need to attach the bracket to the motor and the motor to the extrusion. So the kit comes with some screws here. We're gonna go ahead and slide those in the top. And we're gonna install the bracket to the motor. And we will go ahead, take the countersunk screws that the kit comes with. 
our 2.5 wrench. Now what I like to do is I like to get the T-nuts on there ahead of time. And again, with T-nuts, you only want to thread them on a little bit. That way they'll spin inside and catch. So I will go ahead and take the next one and install it. And just a couple threads on there. So we'll just literally a couple threads. That's it. Now I can go ahead and take that motor, give it a little wiggle, it'll slide in place. I'll leave about the width of a driver. And I'll actually make sure I'm using the right one. About the width of a driver between the motor and the bottom plate. Now we want to make sure those T-nuts turn inside the extrusion. Really easy to see on this one because you can actually see them as they turn. That's why we leave them loose, so they will turn. Okay, I got about the width of my driver underneath the motor, same as the other side. So now we have the motor installed. Next, I will take, now it comes with the upright bracket that's going to be installed. Now I'm not gonna install this right away, I will put through the bolt, attach the T-nuts, but I won't install it yet. Okay, that's ready. We have our motor coupler and our 2.5 wrench. Go ahead and get this on the motor shaft. If you look inside, you can see exactly where to put the motor coupler and make sure you crank that down real good. You want that nice and tight so it doesn't slip off at all. Next, I'll take my lead screw and go ahead and thread it in. We just want to make sure the motor shaft and lead screw do not touch. Then we'll make sure we crank this one down as well, nice and tight. Now it's time to reinstall. Now this is where I'll have this just loosely fitted in here. That way, when I slide it over, I can move it back and forth here so that it'll fit in properly. Now all I'm gonna do here is just get this snugged up. Make sure it's in there, yep. And I'll do the other one again, just snugged up. Just in case, we take our four mil driver here and reinstall our top piece. Okay, I like to go from side to side to make sure nothing's binding. Now make sure that I have tightened down the Z rod brace at the top here. Okay. Now we'll move on to the next step, installing the braided wire as well as the motor cable to the board. So now we're gonna go ahead and open up the board, two mil driver, and then there's one on the top of the board here. Right there. So careful when you take your board off that you don't rip these wires. Now we're going to go ahead and locate X, Y, and our Z motor. There's some hot gun glue on there. Just be careful that you don't rip out the plug. Try and peel the glue off. Sometimes 
You actually have to take something to dig the glue out. And there we go, get rid of that hot gun glue. And we get rid of that Z motor wire. And take a pair of cutters. Because now they give you a split cable. Okay. And then I will go ahead and I don't care about the motor extension wire cable, so I'm just going to cut it free so I don't have to. Now you can go ahead and feel free to do it the other way and take all the tape off, but to save time here, I'm just gonna cut ours and get rid of it because we have a new piece of protective cabling to run through here, which I'll slip underneath like so. Plug that into the Z. All right, and I will reinstall our board case. Careful not to pinch any wires. Flip this back over here. Install that one screw we removed from the top. We'll go ahead and now we're going to take the first Z motor plug and plug it in. And then they provide the second Z motor cable, which will plug in next. And now, just to do a test before we mount our power supply. Now there are many different brackets on Thingiverse, so I'll leave that entirely up to you guys where you want to mount it. Um, basically, you can find some and fit it in inside here. You could potentially maybe put it on the back like so, just as long as it doesn't interfere with your bed. So most people are gonna be putting it in the center here and printing a bracket to work for that. Um, I personally think maybe off of the side would be better somewhere where you can access your power switch, but just for testing purposes, we're going to go ahead and flip the printer around. We'll plug our power supply in. See if it fits under there. Okay. Definitely would need some rearranging, but looks like it will fit inside. Or you could just run it off of the back of the printer. I think that would be best to keep it out in the open, but we'll leave that entirely up to you guys. Thingiverse is full of brackets, so there's definitely something out there for you. Plug in our power supply. So now we'll turn the printer on and see if our Z axis is functioning. And there we have it. Our dual Z axis is installed. With that being said, guys, don't forget to like, share, leave us a comment down below, maybe on some possible ideas for some new videos, because we'd love to share more new content with you. See you in the next video.